What is up, guys? Of course, welcome to our VPL battle against, of course, Poke Trip or the Dallas Arabia. And well, if you see my team analysis, you know exactly what I expected. And really, now he brought exactly what I expected. Now that's not a bad thing, even though if you see my team analysis, I know I am in every sense of the word as a disadvantage, being that his team is. Definitely better than mine when it comes to his OE mods versus mine, which is basically the reason I don't have any of my higher tier mods specifically for this battle. Which, like I said, is a disadvantage, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve instead, and I'm feeling confident I can pull this off. And uh, basically, here, my purpose of Palace 1 is to force his current B to be his lead Pokemon. That's really all I got here. Now, Doug Trio is a possible lead, and even so, Jellison does manage to deal with them with really no real issue. So I'm just gonna leave with Jellicent and we're gonna see how things turns out now. I hope that Jellicent can do some work. I really need to have his cure and B to be at least what do you call it? Um, um it needs to be at least burned. Same thing goes with Sisso. If you get Cure and B at least get burned at least have an honest chance of taking his team on. And outside of that, I really hope it doesn't use us Curse Lax. I was expecting Snorlax to be a part of the game, but Curse Lax is just the worst. And uh, yeah, I basically need to play my best and hope that Trip plays a bit worse than you know usual. So anyway, with all that said, let's go. So yeah, at least from your know, front start, I do get the optimal lead here. Obviously, I'm leaving off with the Necromedusa as Curum B is gonna hit the field now. Being that I have Walkai Berry and some. Defensive investment, if not completely offensive, thinking about it. Uh, I'm gonna take this Fusion Bolt really well. Now, that is all fine and dandy. It could be a possible 50% hit, which means that it's not that. Which also means, you know, that obviously made no sense. But I get to think Burn, which is the only important part. And he doesn't seem to be fully offensive. Now, the Burn is helpful because that means, you know, I can recover back up here and I can pretty much stall him out. He's gonna take this opportunity to bring Checkmate, which is a dog trio. And they are an issue actually because that this means that I can I can't raise the sucker punch with his offensive set, so I need to go for the burn. Now, luckily for me, I guess you'd say he goes for a stealth rock, which means I do get the burn off, which is incredibly important because that means sucker punch won't hurt me, neither will earthquake. But he is not an offensive variant as he carry toxic. And toxic is, well, mmm, what do you say? That is extremely unfortunate. Mostly because even if Necromedusa does kill the checkmates, I'm still in a position where I can do well. And there is simply no turning point for me here. I can't stand against a Plethora of Mon here and I need to stay myself somewhat healthy. Now, being that, you know, I'm feeling that Curum B could possibly go for an Iron Head, I'm going to decide to stay in and recover based on was feeling. You know, Fusion Bolt is in fact the two. And uh, he went for an Iron Head, so that's okay. Probably exactly with Palace Wine. Now, I was hoping he was Scarfed here, I'm not gonna lie. So with that in mind, I decided to go for a Will-O-Wisp here. He's not. He, he's not Scarfed, which is unfortunate because I do get a plethora of damage on my, of course, the Necromedusa. And uh, I'm looking at the part here where I need to recover as it goes for a Fusion Bolt. Now, Fusion Bolt doesn't hurt me too much anymore, basically because it's burned. But the thing is here, Toxic is finally taking a toll on me. And I can't risk it. While well, obviously I'm still in an area where a fusion bolt won't kill me, or actually it will. It definitely will, I'm sorry. Uh, knowing that, I have to switch out. And uh, my opponent, of course, sees that now being a pulse point is not an option. Baltasar is gonna be the man that's gonna carry the weight instead. As he goes for the Iron Head, which does hurt, but it's okay, even though it's a crit, which is unfortunate. But you know, I think he's definitely knockoff range. And uh, he was. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna kill him. And the unfortunate part is that he goes for a power, even with the Sugar Berry. I am now in a bullet punch range, and uh, Jellison snags to kill, of course, with QRMB. So that's a bit unfortunate. I definitely took a bit of a high risk there and did not pay off, as now Drapion can't deal with uh, Scissor. The, the way I say it like that is because Drapion does have Sword Stance and Firefang, and Firefang is a 50% hit on a, a more offensively oriented. Scissor, but now I'm out of option, and uh, basically with that said, I'm gonna bring Jelly Scent and try to burn this thing because I have speed enough to outspeed the Scissor and I can't survive a bullet punch. Well, he's speed invested, which means that, um, yeah, my, my, my plan cannot backfire there. 
So I have to go to Tolos and uh, I have to go for a Dog Pulse here. I could have gone for Flamethrower, but you know, Snorlax is a factor. Therefore, I decided to go for Dark Pulse, and um, Dark Pulse does a bit more than it is supposed to, which means that it's probably a Curse Lex. And I was like, oh shit, no, this is this is gonna backfire on me. Even with Superpower doing a hefty amount of damage, it is simply not enough. And as it goes for a Curse there, my Superpower is not enough, to, or is not enough to kill, which means that I am forced to go for Draco, hoping to do enough damage, because like I said, superpower is not enough, and I can't risk him being, of course, a Resto Shesto or a Resto Sleep Talk. Um, but I just barely miss out on the KO, and you know, it was a roll that would definitely was in my favor, but luckily for me, he goes for Body Slam, which means that I at least can, you know, take him out now, which is extremely important. But I can't bring Palace One, and that's for one reason, and that is simply because I can't bring Palace One in case he has, or Cicero comes in freely on it and destroys it, and probably my team now. So Taurus has to come in, and I'm joining while recording this, but I simply can't stop him. So he's gonna bring Teddy here, and I was feeling Focus Blast gonna come. I can't take Focus Blast with Taurus, I can't risk it. I need to preserve my health for the possible Bullet Punch as it goes to Trick Room, and I'm like, okay. Okay, okay, I see what you're doing. As he goes for Focus Blast, lands it, but due to my special defense investment, I do survive it with just a 3 of health. Probably not the healthiest role, really. Earthquake does so much damage, though, but, you know, I couldn't risk it to oh, switch out again. So it's gonna bring in Sissel as I keep going for Earthquake. While Earthquake does hurt, it is, like I said, not an ideal situation, and I'm just gonna go for Stealth Rock. I basically hope that he kills me, which he doesn't do as he goes past the walls, and so I was like, no, 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 and the reason I say no, 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 is because my role with Tauros is basically, I have a 20% chance of surviving a bullet punch from this range, and while Fire Blast does kill, the roll is not in my favor, and I'll simply fall here. So yeah, it's a very, very short game, and uh, it, there is really nothing I can say, you know, outside of that trip got me. I really, really was trying to waver myself around this team, but I knew that eventually that he will pull this off, and sadly, I couldn't stop him. So, Alright, you know, obviously the afterthoughts here, and, uh, well... I'm actually not really, you know, too mad or too, you know, quote-unquote salty or anything like that. Trip has the better team against me. It's It was very clear from my team builder, or when I started to build the team myself, that uh, I knew that, you know, if anything kind of backfire, I'm going to lose, and there's really nothing I can do to work myself around it, and um, it turned out exactly like that. And, yeah, you know... I could say that I'm mad about it, but in the end it won't necessarily matter because um, Trip plays the game right. Like, he brings exactly the team that was needed to defeat mine. And, uh, you know, this was definitely, you know, I can't beat Trip on his best day with a team like that. I just, I can't. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't, like I said, really anything salty or anything like that because it just wasn't my game to win. Now, having that said, I do think that I do play the game somewhat right, I kind of mess up with Jellicent, uh, and that is eventually what kind of draws it back to me losing the game. Uh, here's the factors that obviously, you know, is pointed to, of course, this is this is why I lose, but um, first of all, of course, the most important part is that uh, I do get my Jellicent toxic, there's really no way of me working around it, and that obviously put my late Jellicent on the timer. And then I say in too many turns with um, with Jellicent, I do get a toxic damage there on me, and uh, I of course, even if I speed creep the scissor, there was no guarantee I was gonna outspeed it. And I might as well have put those very defenses or speed to the defensive instead to actually take that knockoff. Uh, so yeah, I think those factors are. Uh, are the one that backfires on me, you know, I was obviously so in a situation where I needed to have will wisp speedy Will-O-Wisp against him, and uh, since I had, he has some speedy wisp actually, he was barely faster than me, uh, I think he had said it was 20, so I guess it was 2 speed faster than me, um, 
had a maybe fun, you know, I could can never predict that really. But uh, even with that said, um, there was no way of me knowing, and I should definitely have uh, played smart around it and having a more healthy uh, jealous and against him instead of trying to kind of wear it down early on. I was definitely trying to break through too early, and uh, the Drapion play there, yeah, I could probably have brought Hey Dragon instead. I already knew that I was faster, so it was kind of a redundant of me of actually bringing Drapion instead, because Drapion still had a purpose, being of course able to deal with Sister at least. And then we have of course the unfortunate part, which is that he has three crew on his uh, Reuniclus. And the game was kind of, you know, wrapped up there. I really needed a hit with um, Palos One against the Reuniclus. I knew had I hit Reuniclus that Tauros could have swept from there at that point on. Now, sadly, I guess you'd say, you know, I, I just play into his hands there and had I gone for a rock climb right there and then, I would probably be in a much better position because he would still risk the Focus Blast, which would have been forced to be a situation for me to deal with. And uh, instead, I messed that up. And he gets a scissor in free against Power Swan, and the game is wrapped up from there. I couldn't stop him. Uh, Trip played a better game, and he wins the game by that reason alone. I can't take that away from him. It was a fun game, though. It was very fun playing ag aggressive against a much, much more uh, well constructed or well synergized team against mine. I really, really try my best to play around it, but, uh, you know, Trip knows what he's doing, and uh, I simply couldn't keep up, so. We lose our first week in the VPL, but you know, we have still 10 more games to go for, so I'm not mad. So Trip, thank you so much for this battle and good job, buddy, really. And for everybody else, I hope you enjoyed this game and uh, I'll see you in the VPL a week. Well, next week, and then we're going out against the Turbo Drills. <laughs> Let's see how that triple weather goes for him. So with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye.